Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BV3D channel we're going to check out the Silence 3D upgrade board for the Monoprice Maker Select Plus and Wanhao Duplicator i3 Plus 3D printers. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to check out this cool silent stepper driver upgrade kit for the Monoprice Maker Select Plus and Wanhao Duplicator i3 Plus 3D printers. Jan Kossel at Silence3D sent me this cool little upgrade kit to try out. It contains a board with a pair of silent stepper motor drivers for driving the X and Y axis motors. In addition, it also includes a replacement for the breakout board on the X carriage, which allows you to directly drive 12 volt Noctua fans on this 24 volt printer to quiet it down even more. Silence 3D has a range of different kit options, and there's a link in the description if you'd like to check them out. The stepper driver board mounts inside the printer's case, and it communicates with the main board over a pair of ribbon cables. In order to drive the X and Y stepper motors, their cables get unplugged from the main board and plugged into the new stepper driver board. And there are also leads to connect the driver board to the printer's power supply. The part of the main board that one of the ribbon cables connects to is a 10-pin port, but the stock board doesn't have a connector soldered in place there. So Silence 3D includes a very clever solderless 10-pin header that you can tap into place with a small hammer. I had no idea this kind of thing even existed. They include 3D printed parts to support the main board and protect the header while you're tapping it in place. And the parts are designed so you can do this without even removing the main board from the printer. Now, because I made some previous modifications to my printer, I had already soldered a 10 pin header there. But I have a link to their installation video in the description showing you how to tap that part into place. In addition to the hardware, this upgrade involves installing upgraded firmware, and the firmware used as a modification of my favorite firmware for this printer, Sebastian Andreve's ADV i3++. The ADV i3++ firmware is based on Marlin 119, and I've got a video covering the installation of it linked in the description. So the process for that will be the same, we'll just be using firmware files downloaded from Silence3D instead of Sebastian Andreve's site. Now, I've been using ADV i3++ for probably two years at this point, and I really like it. So this won't be a big change for me, but if you've been using the stock firmware, you are in for a treat. Now, I also support the ADV i3++ project via Patreon because I appreciate the vastly improved capabilities that it gives over the stock firmware, and I know projects like this take a lot of time and effort. So if you use ADV i3++ and enjoy it, please consider supporting it via Patreon. Okay, so here are all the parts that I received from Silence 3D. The new driver board, the tap-in header and printed parts, the new X-carriage breakout board, and all the cables needed to connect things. I'm supplying my own 12-volt Noctua fans for this upgrade. I'm using a 4-pin PWM model for the parts cooling fan, and I'm using a regular 3-pin model for the heatsink fan. If you don't want to supply your own fans, Silence 3D has kits which include them too. This breakout board is from early in the production, I think, so the three pin connector here isn't keyed, but on current boards it is. What this means is that I need to be careful how I plug my fan's cable in because there's nothing to prevent me plugging it in the wrong way around. There is also an unpopulated two pin port marked 24 volt, and that's there so you can solder on a connector if you want to keep using your 24 volt heatsink fan while using the Noctua fan for parts cooling. Now, before we really get going on all this, it's important to note that if you do this, you assume all risk associated with this upgrade. It is entirely possible to fry your upgrade board, or fry your main board, or leave your printer bricked if something goes wrong with the firmware upgrade. So, the hardware installation was very simple. It's just a matter of unplugging and plugging things in. I followed the steps in their installation video. Plugging in the power leads for the upgrade board and connecting them to the power supply, unplugging the X and Y stepper motors from the main board and plugging them into the upgrade board, attaching the upgrade board to the printer's case. You need to do this because the board uses the case as a heat sink for the silent stepper drivers, and connecting the upgrade board to the main board with the ribbon cables. Now, 
Then I tucked the wires out of the way and neatened it up a bit with a zip tie. After that, I removed the ribbon cable and the cover from the back of the X carriage, unplugged all the connectors from the original breakout board, replaced it with the new one, and plugged the cables back in. The connections are all labeled, so it was pretty straightforward. The stepper motor plugs into the 4-pin connector marked E motor. The heater cartridges cable is the one with the extra insulation on it, and that plugs into the port marked heater. The thermistor cable plugs into temp, and the X limit switch plugs into X min. No, min, as in minimum. Sorry, Professor Xavier. Next, I removed the stock fans and installed the Noctua fans, and once those were in place, I plugged them into the new breakout board as well. With all the connections in place, I replaced the cover, neatened up the fan wires with a zip tie, and plugged the ribbon cable back in. At this point, it was time to install the firmware, so I downloaded the files for the mainboard and for the LCD from the Silence 3D site, and once again, I followed the instructions to install it. The TLDW version, that's too long, didn't watch, is that you put the LCD firmware files on a micro SD card that's 8 gigabytes or smaller in size, insert it into the LCD screen, and turn on the printer. The LCD will automatically install the firmware, and when it's done, you turn the printer off and eject the card. I keep an old 2GB card handy just for this. With the LCD firmware updated, the next step is to connect the printer to the computer with a USB cable and use Cura to send the firmware update to the main board. That took just a couple of minutes, and then it was done. One of the nice things about the ADV i3++ firmware is that it allows you to do PID tuning for both the hot end and the bed right from the LCD. And because the place where the PID values are stored in the main board are different than with the stock firmware, you need to do that right after the update. Okay, well now that we have the hardware and the firmware installed and the PID tuning done, let's do a little before and after comparison. I sliced an XYZ calibration cube with the nozzle and bed temperature set to zero degrees, so this is a dry run print. We're not pushing any filament, in fact I don't even have any loaded. This is just to get the motion system in motion, so that we can hear how loud the printer is with the stock fans and drivers. Now, here's that same dry run file post upgrade so that we can get a sense of whether this has gotten any quieter. And yes, that is so much nicer. Replacing those stock fans with the Noctua fans and adding the silent stepper motor drivers to the X and Y axes really quiets this thing down. Now the Z axis is still as loud as it ever was, but honestly it doesn't move that much during a print, so that's okay. And yeah, I know I've got something rattling on the Y axis. It's probably the bearings. I should replace those. They're a few years old at this point. Hey, let's look at that again.
That is quite a difference. So the cost of this kit with the stepper drivers and the breakout board is about $75 US. If you get it with the Noctua fans included, it's about $105 US. But like I said, there are different options available. Check them out at silence3d.com and there's a link in the description. I think it's a pretty great upgrade and it really takes the noise down several notches. Now while it may look a little pricey, I think the target audience for this upgrade is someone who wants their Maker Select Plus or WANHAL Duplicator i3 Plus to be quieter and they're comfortable with tinkering a little bit, but they're not comfortable handling a soldering iron. I mean, yes, you could buy something like an SKR Mini E3 and the touchscreen to go with it and retrofit all that into this case, but by the time you add in the fans, you're at about the same price, and plus you'd need to edit the Marlin firmware to get it to work properly because the Mini E3 board comes with firmware for the Ender 3 on it, so that route is a little more involved. And that's kind of the great benefit of this upgrade kit is that you don't have to solder anything. All the hardware is just plug and play. And the firmware that you need to install is already configured for the printer. So thanks again to Jan Kossel at Silence3D for sending this kit to me. I will enjoy the silence. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for today. And now that we're at the end of the video, let's go quietly print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways that you can do exactly that. And don't forget, whether you're interested in buying things that were featured in this video or just buying things online in general, there are links in the description to get you to the right place. I've got some other videos here that you might want to take a look at as well. Also, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Subscribing is absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BB3D channel.